Hi everyone, welcome to MD International Studies online course. My name is Serena and today we are going to be learning about the cell. Uh, probably this should be the first lecture that you watch out of our lectures. It's probably one of the most important to get a basic understanding of biology and anatomy. Uh, before we move on, I wanted to mention that any words you see in bold are keywords, meaning these are words that you could be tested on and that you're required to know. So why don't we just jump into it? So to have a little overview before we get started, today we are going to be speaking about the cell. We're going to define what homeostasis is in regards to the cell. We're going to talk about the different types of cell, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. We're then going to jump into the eukaryote cell and discuss its different organelles, which are also the cell subunits. And then we are going to speak about the cytoskeleton in regards to the cell. So the cell, what is it? So right down here, if you guys check this, check this out, down here is a cell. Okay, that's very nice, but what does that mean? So I like to first start on a macro level, on the big picture, to understand the cell, which is so tiny. So first, let's take an organism. An, or an organism is us, a human being. And inside the human being, we have organ systems. For example, in this picture, we have the digestive system. Here, we have the stomach, the small intestines, the large intestines. And then if we just pluck one of the organs out right here, that's, that's the stomach. And organs are made out of tissues. And tissues are composed of cells. So cells is the smallest structural and functional unit of a living organism. It is, the, it is the basic unit of life and is capable of maintaining homeostasis. So what's homeostasis? The, way the, the easiest way that I like to think about this is that homeostasis is about maintaining a vital environment, the best environment for the cell to function. For example, if external, external from the cell, outside the cell, so right now we see down here, this is the inside of the cell. If the outside of the cell, let me just get my pen out here, this is the outside, out, and this is the inside. Sorry that you can't see it so well, but. So if the outside of the cell became very, um, very hot or very acidic or very salty, the inside of the cell would still not change. It would try to maintain its balance and its, and its optimal activity. And the best analogy that I can think of in regards to the cell and homeostasis is that the cell is like a city. The city, ha inside the city, they have, it has many different districts, factories, garbage dumps, libraries, uh, so um, power plants. And um, the city wants to keep everyone happy and functioning, it's functioning properly. And this is homeostasis. Homeostasis is the ability of an organism or cell to maintain internal equilibrium by adjusting its physiological processes. So keeping the cell happy. <laughs> so we, we mentioned that, I said in our overview, that we talk about there are different types of cells. So there are actually two types of cells. The first one being the prokaryote. And that mean, and to break the word down, pro means before, and karyote is actually the word for nucleus. And this is an, an organelle that we're going to speak about uh, later on in our lecture. Um, an example of a prokaryote cell is bacteria. And the last cell type is eukaryotes. And eu means true in Latin, and karyote is nucleus, so true nucleus. And examples of eukaryotes are protists, fungi, plants, and animals. And what category do we, human beings, fall under? Eukaryotes. We're an, we are composed of animal cells. And um, if I were to ask you, actually, what kind of cells can we find in our body? The correct answer is both eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Why is that? Well, just a fun fact. 
we have trillions of bacteria living in our gut, living in our gut, helping us to digest and absorb certain foods. <laughs> So some organisms, such as bacteria, as I mentioned, are unicellular, meaning they're composed of only one cell. In bacteria, one cell. They're not multicellular, which is composed of many cells like human beings. Uh, just some fun facts. Humans are actually, have an estimated of 10 trillion cells in our body. The size of a cell is usually between 10 to 30 micrometers, so that's Yep, 10 to 30 micrometers, and we're only, and it can only be visible under a microscope. And prokaryotes are actually one tenth of the size of the diameter of a eukaryote, so they're much smaller. So down here you can see a picture of a eukaryote and a prokaryote. And now we're we're going to actually talk about the difference between these two cells. Uh, I'm going to jump back and forth between this uh, table and this picture to explain to you the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. Um, while I do that, I, I would recommend you to rec write down this chart because it will be a chart that you will look back to, I guarantee it. <laughs> so first off, prokaryotes are unicellular. They're independent organisms, usually some very small in size. So as mentioned, for example, bacteria, they're composed of only one cell. However, eukaryotes, can be unicellular or multicellular, and, we're, and they're usually organisms that are larger in size. For example, human beings are multicellular. However, maybe some protists, which are also eukaryotes, can also be unicellular. Prokaryotes have no membrane-bound organelles, while eukaryotes have membrane-bound organelles. So let me explain to you what that means. We're going to go more into detail when we speak about what's inside the eukaryote cell, but let's just brief overview. So taking a look at this picture, you can see that there are many different, different things going on inside this eukaryote cell. We have, little, we have different pictures. We have you know, these circular structures here. We have this nucleus here that we're going to speak about. And a lot of things are enclosed. That's membrane bound, meaning they're enclosed with by a membrane. Uh, and here inside of this prokaryote cell, there you see that there's no nothing, there's no membrane bound function, subunit, organelles. It's just you see this big string, circular string of actually um, chromosome. And we're going to speak about what that is. So prokaryotes have no membrane bound organelles, and eukaryotes have membrane bound organelles. Prokaryotes have no nucleus. Instead, their genetic material, which is the material that they pass on to their offspring, is contained in a circular molecule of DNA, and this is located in a region called the nucleoid. The nucleoid. So going back here, you see their DNA, prokaryotic DNA is circular. Circular, right here, the squiggly circles. And this region where it's located is called a nucleoid. However, eukaryotes have a membrane-bound nucleus. Remember, all the organelles in a eukaryote are membrane-bound, so including the nucleus, is membrane-bound where the genetic material, the DNA, is organized into linear strands known as chromosomes. So going back to our picture, as we see here, the the prokaryote has its circular DNA, and the eukaryote, this over here is a nucleus, and its DNA, which you can't see in the, this picture, but I'll draw for you anyways, actually comes in linear strands, and it's located within this nucleus, this membrane-bound organelle. Remember, the prokaryote is, is the DNA, its genetic material is located in a region called the nucleoid. In prokaryotes, pretty much everything's out in the open. Nothing is, is inside uh, membrane-bound organelles. Both the prokaryote and the eukaryote have a plasma membrane. Now that's this, this um, structure over here. Here's a prokaryote's plasma membrane. This thing you see going around. This uh, red and yellow stripe going around. And also here. Here in the eukaryote. That's also the plasma membrane, which is pretty much the, the 
what differentiates the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. However, prokaryotes also have a cell wall. This is an extracellular structure that surrounds the plasma membrane and closes the cell. So, oops, sorry. The, the cell wall, which you see here, it's this yellow structure on the outside of the cellular membrane, which is here. This structure gives extra protection to the cell, and all prokaryotes have a cell wall. However, um, the cell wall, wall in pro, eukaryotes is only present in fungi, plants, and some protista, some protists. But cell walls are not found in animal cells, meaning in our human body, our eukaryote cells that compose our tissues and our organs, you're, they do not have any cell walls. And finally, in regards to um, cell division, in regards to proliferation, prokaryotes divide and create offspring by fission or budding, and eukaryotes do it by mitosis and meiosis. Um, don't get caught up so much in the wording right now because these will be um, these features will be discussed in future lectures on um, cell uh, replication, cell division, and the cell cycle in general. But just so you should know these keywords, fission and budding, and mitosis or meiosis. And there are our cells, the prokaryote and the eukaryote. So, so far, what did we talk about? Well, we said the cell is the smallest functional unit of a living organism, and its job is to maintain homeostasis. It wants to keep the cell happy. No matter what's going on on the outside of that cell, no matter what external changes are happening, the cell wants to maintain a vital environment on the inside. Our city wants to keep everyone inside happy. Prokaryotes, as we mentioned, are always unicellular, and eukaryotes are, can be unicellular or multicellular. These are our two types of cells, eukaryotes and prokaryotes. Prokaryotes before the nucleus, as we spoke about, it doesn't have a nucleus. It has a, a region where you can find its genetic material, its DNA, in the nucleoid. And eukaryotes have a nucleus where you find its linear strands of DNA. Next up, we're going to actually take a look inside the eukaryote cell, which is most pertainable to us as human beings. And we're going to check out the different functions of these organelles, these subunits. Um, inside our city. I actually like to think about it as the different districts of the city, which we'll see soon. But before, right before we talk about what's happening on the inside of the eukaryote, it's a eukaryote cell, we mentioned that the plasma membrane can be found in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So going back to our chart again, remember, we said the plasma membrane can be found in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So, Sorry, going back. So the plasma mem membrane serves as a border. It's the city wall that surrounds the cell. Now I have to mention that the plasma membrane, we have a whole lecture on it. So if you don't understand everything that I'm saying right now, feel free to go check out that lecture afterwards. So it encloses the cell, the plasma mem membrane, and it allows certain things in and certain things out of the cell. This is known as selectively permeable. It's a selectively permeable feature function. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's the structure. And um, it, re it really allows things to come inside the cell, like, like our city. Our city needs to have certain produce, certain um, things coming inside, and trash going outside. So that's the, the plasma membrane really serves as the city wall, this, um, this border between the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. So, the eukaryotic, or, or eukaryotic organelles, as I mentioned, we're now going to take a look inside the cell and the different features. So, the way that I like to think of organelles, they're subunits within the cell, and they each have a specific function. The city, the cell, has districts. So, the way I like to think about it is like one of my hometowns in New York City. New York City has different districts. It has you know, different areas. It has the Upper West Side and the Upper East Side. It has the Lower West Side, the West Village, the Lower East Side, the East Village. It has Chelsea. It has, um, it has Midtown. So it has many different districts, as many different areas within the city. And each of these areas has a specific function, has a certain feature to it that it helps 